Hey everyone. How are you all? I'm going to wait for Ashley to join from Mana Collective. We're going to be talking about some wonderful topics from meditation to um, so many other things. Affirmations. <laughs> I've invited her in, so I'm just going to wait for her to join and then we can have a really lovely chat on a, what is it, Tuesday? Is it Wednesday? Thursday. It's Thursday. Um, so I'm going to wait for her to join and then um, we will start. But I'm really excited for this. I think it's going to be so lovely. Oh, amazing. Okay, I think she said that she's requested. Mine says I've requested. Oh. Let me try again. Invite. You see my invite? Oh, thank you all. Whoever sending you love. Hey. Hi, how are how you? How are you? Oh, it's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. For anybody that is joining, this is Ashley. She is the founder of Mala Collective, which is my favorite Mala brand. I, I use your Mala oh. so much. They're so beautiful. We recently um, had gifted them to like 60 of our guests at one of our meditation events. And everyone has been obsessed with them. Um, and they're just so oh. beautiful. They're made from different types of gemstones. Um, and you guys also do cushions as well, right? We like do. You can't cushions. really see it, but I'm sitting on a meditation cushion right now. Amazing. With beautiful sit sets and anything that can inspire mindfulness meditation. As you know, you don't need anything to meditate, yeah. uh, but we, we do make really beautiful mala beads, meditation cushions, crystals. I teach a lot of meditation, so I'm, I'm just That's really amazing. grateful. <laughs> oh, well, isn't that wonderful? We both Oh my gosh, we're one. matching. So this is actually my favorite mala. So Labradorite my is dear. for serendipity and magic and synchronicity. And I... I so believe in serendipity and synchronicity. Yes. It's how the whole business started. And I'm grateful that you feel connected to that one too. Oh, that's so cool that we have the same one. Honestly, they've got yes. so many different gemstones. And I, and I love that because I really feel like, and I would love to hear you speak a little bit more on it, but I really feel whatever you're attracted to at the moment is what you probably need. And having experienced so many of your um, your malas made from all the different stones, I really see myself feeling called to different stones at different yeah. times. Um, yeah. But I would love for you to talk, to talk about some of the gems that you have and why you think that they could help during your meditation practice. Um, mm. For anybody listening, I think what we'll probably do is go through um, different ways of starting a meditation practice and how you can really get into it. Because sometimes it can be so difficult to just start because we feel like we need so much to get going, but we don't. And so I thought maybe we'll have a little conversation about that. And then also just overcoming different obstacles and how to really step into your power. And I think meditation is such a huge part of that. So um, yeah, please tell us a little bit more about the beads of and, um, and how they will help during your meditation practice. Of course. Well, for anyone that doesn't know what a mala is, it is a string of beads. There's 108 beads on here with a tassel. And the idea is that you take this mala in your fingers and you turn your fingers through each bead. And on each bead, you do an inhale and an exhale. And when, when we're in meditation, if any of you have tried it before, I'm sure you notice how your mind wanders. And that's natural and that's normal. The idea of a mala is it allows you to have something tactile and a focal point in your meditation to bring your attention and your intention back. So mm -hmm. as you mentioned, the different gemstones have different qualities, different intentions with it. The, the intentions, I, I agree with you, we're drawn to something. We don't always need to know why. So maybe we're seeking love and rose quartz really represents and helps us uh, embody love and this sense mm -hmm. that if we're meditating on it, if it's in front of us, you know, it's something that we keep meditating into and that we're surrounding ourselves with and really breathing into that intention. So mm -hmm. I truly believe that meditation you know, again, we only need our breath in meditation, but to have this tactile object that takes us through when we start to wonder, that holds an intention that we're really leaning into, whether that's love, whether that's mm -hmm. strength, whether that's patience, all the, they're all beautiful intentions. And, yeah. you know, I mean, whenever I talk to people about them, like, oh, I need patience. Oh, I need love. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We could all use all of them. So there's no wrong intention. I, I do believe that what we're called to naturally reflects what we're seeking in that moment. 
Definitely. And, you know, I've been using malas. I use a sandalwood mala when I'm doing my mm. meditation often. Um, it's made from the sandalwood wood. Um, mm. um, or tulsi. I use a tulsi mala as well. But it's been really lovely, yes. you know, meditating with these two, depending on what I've been called to. But I really find, I mean, I tried so many different types of meditation with and without beads. And yes. I find it's exactly that. Our senses are so stimulated constantly. And our senses mm. are constantly drawn to so many different things, whether it's your sight, your physical touch. We're so used to being on our phones, which involves so much physical yeah. touch in your hand that it's almost difficult when our hands are bare. And so I think having something specific to your meditation practice that you pick up, I really think different spaces can hold energy, but so can objects. And so yes. when you constantly remind yourself that these beads are linked to my meditation practice, this is, as soon as I pick these up, this is how your mind links to the peace, yeah. the focus, the attention that you need during that time. And um, I do exactly that. I have a mantra that I that I meditate on. Um, and mm. I usually sit for about an hour and a half and I always use the beads and it really helps bring back your attention and your focus to that moment in time. And so I think the legal touch is such an important part of it. And then um, for anybody else that, you know, once to try and engage all your other senses, I really find um, that can be for your physical touch because we're so used to using our hands so much. But then if you want something for the rest of your senses, for your ears, you can play some calming meditation music or go outside and listen to the birds. I do that often and it's such a beautiful yeah. sound. Um, for yeah. your eyesight, I have an altar where I have, whether it's images or DTs or whatever it is that that you feel connected to or that helps you connect to god or the universe you can you can have that as something visual in front of you or even the mantra that you're that you're meditating on um yeah. and that sound hearing touch um taste or smell i think the I mantra think. the mantra is so important and i think it can be so simple so when i started I would just repeat, I am, and I would sit in reflection before my meditation and yeah. ask myself, what am I calling in? What intention do I want to bring in today? So I would just take a few breaths and okay, maybe it's, I want to feel supported. So on each beat, I would inhale, I am and exhale supported mm -hmm. so that the mantra can shift and change. And what I also bring into my practice is I journal and I find it's a really beautiful practice to write out what was my mantra today. And mm -hmm. when I look back through my journal, I can see this evolution of, oh, wow, I was really seeking love that day. I was really seeking mm -hmm. support that day. So you can start to see that journey uh, and that experience of what you're going through and what you're seeking and what you're connecting to within yourself. So I love this idea of combining the tactile and the mantra and also yeah. the sound. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I love that you use affirmations for it too. I usually, I have a Sanskrit mantra that I have connected to that I really chant on the beads, but I think affirmations, like you said, are so important to really mm. um, remind yourself of what is it that I need today? And it's exactly what you said. Like, what is it that I'm feeling today? What do I need more of? And then, mm. and then almost placing yourself into that before it even happens. And I feel like that's what affirmations yeah. are. It's, it's almost, it's creating that and visualizing that and embodying it to mm. then have it. It's almost, it's like fake it till you make it, but you're not faking it. You're yeah. actually, <laughs> you're actually really inviting it. It's like an invitation yeah. to yourself. And so whether yes. it's strength, whether it's feeling love, whether it's power, whether it's energy, whether it's whatever it is that you feel like you need in that moment, yes. having that and calling that to you, whatever you put out to the universe, it really does bring back to you. And so I think that's a beautiful thing to also have your beads for and, and carry your beads around everywhere to remind you, what is it that I yes. need? Today? Like, what do I need in oh. my life? Sorry, I lost I lost you for a second. Oh, my my okay. I got my oh, time notification of you're spending too much time on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a great I way to spend it. So. <laughs> um, one of those one of the things I would mention is wearing my malas starts such a vulnerable and open conversation with people. And I always end up gifting them to people. So I notice when I'm flying, I usually sit beside somebody anxious. And whether or not they are religious or spiritual, teaching yeah. them to turn a bead through their fingers and just breathe. Oh, yeah. what a calming experience. It's such a beautiful gift mm -hmm. to give. So I'm always aware to, to share it in a really accessible way. And that's why we make what we make that, you know, yeah. being able to help people connect to themselves. It, it's so special. You know, I started Mala Collective 11 years ago and wow, meditation. Yeah. Meditation is very trendy and hip and beautiful now. I, I mean, I've always adored it, but 
people talk about it in such an open way now. And 11 mm -hmm. years ago, it wasn't, it wasn't that way. And what I think is really curious is over the years, people have emailed and shared, you know, this model helped me get through divorce. It helped me through abuse. It helped mm -hmm. me through sex change. It helped me through becoming an empty nester. And that this becomes this physical object that represents transformation. And when people will email and say, this mala helped me do X, Y, Z. It's like, wow, well, this mala represents your commitment to your journey and your yeah. commitment to yourself and your commitment to slow down and breathe and reconnect. So it's a pretty beautiful product and a pretty beautiful experience and it's a beautiful yeah. vulnerability it's beautiful conversation and i'm just honored that um, people feel really connected to it and i'm grateful that you feel connected to it so i thank do you for definitely it. so i mean i had just saw a question that said um is it offensive to use malas if you're not religious it's not at all like you can use like you said you can use malas for your affirmations you can use malas to just it, you know what it's more to become more present in the moment and when you become more present yeah. in the moment you connect deeper to yourself and then when you become get connected deeper to yourself, you're connecting to your soul, the universe, and mm -hmm. everything around you so much better. So it, it doesn't have to be linked to a specific religion or a specific spiritual practice if you don't want it to. It can just be a practice that is for you and the mala is for you. And so, yeah, it definitely isn't, isn't offensive um, to use a mala for that. Um, yeah. I guess it would be really lovely to maybe help people. I read another um, another comment that said, so how do I start my initial practice? Like, how should I start mm. off my initial meditation practice? And maybe if you'd like to share, then I can share something, um, share a little bit after about how I started mine. Would you like to hear how I start my practice in general or how I start a practice, like my morning practice? I think it'll be helpful for people to, to know if they were trying to start a meditation practice, mm. what would the first steps be? Like, what would you mm. recommend? Yeah, that's a great question. Step? Yeah, I think that's a really beautiful question. One thing I will say is in my experience of teaching, most people assume they're doing it wrong. And most yeah. people, because it's such an internalized practice, that the words that are associated with it are need and should, which are so full of self-judgment. When actually mm -hmm. meditation is meant to be quite liberating and self-connecting, but still can be incredibly uncomfortable. It's not meant to be bliss every single time. So yeah. when, when you're starting practice, what I always offer to people is, to tie it to something you're already doing in the morning. So building the habit of a new practice, a new routine. So yeah. when I'm, I'm from Vancouver, but I live in New York. So when I'm in Vancouver and I boil my water and I put in my French press, I sit down and that becomes my trigger point. That's a habit I've already built. And then I sit down to my meditation practice. I also suggest starting small. Maybe it's starting two minutes or four minutes or yeah. eight minutes. And then the last thing I suggest is if you miss a day, which you will, because you're human and things happen, to not judge yourself. I yes. think we have a really all-or-nothing mentality. Yes, when we do, we do a lot of free meditation series at Mala Collective, and we notice that if somebody falls off on day three or four, like I just can't go back. They then I just don't return. come back. Yeah. They just judge themselves. And it's like, but if your friend told you I fell off for a day, you would say to your friend, "That's okay. You can get yeah. back on it." But we're so hard on ourselves, and we're so judgmental. So I would say starting small, tying it to a habit. And in terms of the practice, you know, that I do, I love my mala and I travel with it. I meditate with it. Um, I notice that, you know, it takes between eight to 10 minutes of breathing at like a normal pace. And if I'm going really fast, that means I'm really yeah. anxious. <laughs> so that's my checking yeah. point of I must have anxiety today. But I think starting small and I don't always sit on my cushion every morning. Sometimes I like to follow my body. And if I like to do an outdoor meditation, like you yeah. mentioned mindfulness of sound, I love that. And especially, you know, in spring, summer, being outside is really important to me and moving my hips and getting into my body. And in Definitely. the fall, winter, I'm usually more inclined to be on a cushion with my tea and my malas. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I would probably say the same thing. I think starting small is a, a big one. I remember when I first started and I was becoming almost like obsessed with meditation. I was like, no, I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to wake up at yeah. 5 a.m. and I'm going to meditate for like two hours. And then it's yeah. true, as soon as you go from doing that, to within a week realizing it wasn't at the time manageable for me, you end up feeling so bad about it. Whereas if you set yourself manageable um, goals or manageable timeframes for you to build up. And, you know, I went from doing, I, I tried that again and I did like, I would do one round or two rounds. And then mm -hmm. now after 10 years, I've managed to build up a practice, which is 16 rounds of it. And it's yeah. like, but, but that took such a long period of time. And even then, Sometimes I'm like, oh, I didn't even get to finish my practice today or I didn't really do it properly. And if it ends up 
being something where you're where it stops you you should know that your your mindset is wrong like your mindset is stopping you from doing something that's great for you the mala is not judging you the universe is not judging you but you're judging yourself and stopping yourself from actually having this practice that can help you so don't stop just because you're yesterday you had 20 minutes and today you have five that doesn't mean you don't do it don't wait for the day you have another 20 minutes um and i think that's so important because yeah, you almost, you almost, when something is good for you, it's like when a person is really good for you and brings out the best in you and then you do something yeah. wrong and you do something yeah. bad, you don't want to go in front of them because you don't want them to judge you or, or, or think of you wrongly. And I feel like that's how, what, how we end up feeling about our spiritual practices where you're like, no, but you know, it's like the place where I'm meant to be good, but then I've done something or I missed it. And, and it, you know, I don't want to go back to it like that as who I am now. Um, I think that that right and wrong is so curious in meditation. I, I had definitely. one teacher say to me, once you meditate every day for 200 days, then we'll talk about how to sit. And I think that's so normal for us to hook into, am I doing it right? Am yeah. I doing it wrong? And I get a lot of questions. What's the ROI on meditation? I think it's such a funny, like, when will it kick in? And I think yeah. I like to compare it to like therapy. Like not every definitely. therapy session is great. But when we start to embody it in between, maybe we're nicer to our partner or to, you know, somebody down the street, we've been, maybe we would have reacted differently. Like that's when the mindfulness kicks in. So Definitely. I think that the more I practice, the more I realize there's not really a right or a wrong. And I follow my intuition a lot more now on what I need each day. And yeah, yeah it's, it's, I wish I that it gives you what you need I in that moment. That. Yeah. Like, I think the way that you, like you said, the reactions and stuff, I definitely noticed that when I, when my meditation has been deep and and attentive i notice a difference in my in the way that i'm being the way that i'm present throughout the day the way that i react to people the way that i connect to people um how i feel when i am usually quite anxious or nervous in a situation but i find myself being able to be calm and collected it's such subtle things and, and the beautiful thing about meditation is that it is so personal it'll affect each person so differently and have a different reaction or um, a different effect depending on what is the what, like what you needed to work on that day and I think um, that's why there's no oh but this person felt like this when they meditated how come I don't feel like yeah. that it's it's not about that it's such a personal connection to it so um, yeah that's such a good point I think it's like this chase like I've had moments where I'm weeping in joy and then there's definitely moments where I don't want to be doing this meditation today and it's the ups and downs are so normal and I think that whenever I teach, I think that what, what's so curious is everyone is curious if they're doing it right, but they don't want to ask out loud. So they all line up after and ask the same questions. And there is no wrong way. There, I, I don't believe there's a right and a wrong way. I think it's what a gift to make time to connect with ourselves, to connect to our, yeah. in, our intuition, to spirit, to universe, to God, whatever words you want to use. And yeah. some days that's really uncomfortable. And some days it's really beautiful. Um, and it just, I mean... I wish I knew that 11 years ago when I started, I really thought there was a right and a wrong. So for me, it's all about how can we make something that's really beautiful that can inspire you and yeah. to help hold you to understand there is no right and wrong. And I, I truly believe, you know, our homes and our spaces are a reflection of who we are. So having a really beautiful cushion in your living room, you know, some people joke that having the cushion out will guilt me into meditation because I see it in the mornings and then yeah. you finally get to that point where you're like oh I have my space my sacred space so it's um, I think that's important yeah, yeah I always say even when is. I lived in my small like I had a, a New York apartment when I was in my house at, uh, in London with my family I had a little corner in my bedroom right next yeah. to the the heater where I would meditate yeah. every day and then yeah. when I moved to New York I you know we were in like a very small apartment it was like 600 and something square foot apartment and and I picked a corner by the window where I yeah. sat with just one cushion and I had a little altar there and that's where I would meditate. And, you know, as time has gone on, my, my environment has changed, but there's always been one sacred space where I meditate. But then I was traveling so much at one point in my mm -hmm. life. And the only thing that remained constant in my life and everything was changing and I found it quite um, difficult to, to ground through the changes. The only thing that helped me stay grounded was that one practice that stayed the same wherever mm -hmm. I was in the world. And that was my meditation. So it can definitely be something where that ritual can help bring you back to this place of like feeling like you're within a sacred space and whether that's within you or ex externally, um, having that consistency in your day can really help bring that feeling back whether you're in the same place or not. I think you would probably laugh at the apartment I'm in right now. It's 
my kitchen is my office <laughs> and my yeah. room. But I have, you know, I've got the meditation kush, I've got the crystals, I've got the incense. And you're right, the, the constant traveling. I meditate a lot on planes, in lines, and it's just, you know, repeating a mantra or quietly breathing or taking, you know, just doing box breathing, just these really, really simple things. It doesn't need to be 20 minutes, but I hear you. Being able to just travel with it is so special and important. Definitely. I was just reading some of yeah. the questions, and one of them was, where do you ship to? Where do you ship your malas to? Is it worldwide or...? It's worldwide, but I would say, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's so exciting. Someone from Estonia orders. I'm like, where is Estonia? Cool. <laughs> On the map. And it's, it's so cool. So, I mean, we ship everywhere. But, I mean, people can, you also please feel free to message me. And I, I think it's such a cool conversation. Like, what intention should I have? What crystal suits me? Or, like, how do I start this? I love talking yeah. to you about that. So, it's, uh, it's a really cool journey. But, yeah, we ship everywhere. And um, always interested to see how people connect and the feelings it brings up in people. Definitely. Um, if anybody has any other questions, please write them here. We would love to answer some of your questions. And um, yeah, um, actually, I don't know whether there's anything else you'd like to share about your meditation practice or your malas or mm. your cushions or any, anything to do with the yeah. brand. I mean, I'll share very quickly. So we started 11 years ago and the whole practice and, and purpose of mala is an exploration of how do we connect to ourselves and how do we yeah. create products that inspire that self-connection and whether that's malas or cushions or crystals and we do a lot of free content i truly believe in you know all of our pieces have free guided meditations i so believe mm -hmm. in in the practice of it so how can we make that really accessible and you know before i started this i used to cover murder trials i was a journalist for many years oh covering God. murder which is like the opposite of meditation and this is the most beautiful path to be able to talk to people in a really vulnerable way about what they're seeking. And yeah. I think one thing I've learned is everyone's looking for it. And once you start talking about it, it gives permission for them to share their journey and where they're at and whatever language they use behind it. But I mean, um, the website itself is Mala Collective. I mean, I guess I could plug that. That probably would be a good thing to do. Yes, Mala Collective. We cushions and balas. I made a secret code right before I jumped on. So we made Roddy 20 that only for people that are listening because I, I don't know oh, anyone will see this. So I can, I can oh, tag that it. Great. Roddy. Yeah, so I mean, they can use that. 20, um, is, it, is, is that for, I'm guessing 20% off. That's right. Yeah, for everything. <laughs> so I mean, um, all the malas, all the cushions. Oh, we make kids cushions. I probably could have brought that up. So oh, I, I so, so believe lovely. in helping bring mindfulness to kids. So we have these meditation cushions in the shape of a cloud to help the thoughts pass like clouds and the meditation cushions like a sloth to help them slow down. So being able to make it playful and fun, we had a full day of filming where all these kids came in to teach meditation and this mom and daughter came in to do this beautiful Bollywood dance as like a somatic movement meditation. I think the little girl lasted 15 seconds before she looked Aww. at the camera and started picking her nose and belly flopped on the cushions. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of what meditation's <laughs> like sometimes. So it's a very playful, beautiful approach where the kids are teaching kids how to meditate. We have a lot of okay. online content and that. So I mean, yeah, it's all about making Aww. it accessible and joyful. Oh, that's so wonderful. Yeah, so you've got such a great collection. It's almost like everything that you need to create that sacred space, which is so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's really of kind course. of Someone you. just said, I bought for Mala Collective. I live in the UK and bought for me and my children. Oh, that's so oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. It's always that feeling of having created something and seeing somebody wear it. I'll never forget the first time I saw somebody wearing it on the street. I honked my horn. Of thank course. That would so be so much. funny. Oh, it's the most beautiful feeling. But to oh, see that. Is it www.malacollective.com? Is that the, is it Mala? This came up. <laughs> oh, yes. Is it www.malacollective.com? <laughs> That's right. Yes, I can, I can also put that in there. I'm going to pin that as well. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Great. Oh, that's so great. And I love that we love the same mala. That's so I know, beautiful. me too. It's so beautiful. Yeah. There's something about this. It's just very, yeah. it reminds me of the moon. Yeah. The color oh, of yeah. It. All the shine and the sheen in it. I think like, I so believe in serendipity and synchronicity that we're meant to meet the right people at the right time. And I'm the business started because I met a lady on an airplane. And so I believe so much in the people that you meet today and tomorrow, like we could change their life. They could change our life if we're just open Definitely. to it. And I believe that 
meditation helps us stay open and to trust yeah. and to trust the universe and to trust our intuition. And it's, yeah, it's, it's helped me a lot. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story, and sharing all these tips. It's been so wonderful to speak with you. Yeah. And thank it's you so much for being honest. They're so, so beautiful. And I'm so excited to just continue this journey with them. They're really wonderful. And for anybody who wants to purchase one or um, have a look at all the different um, stoned um, manas and the collection, I've um, tagged the, I pinned the website. It's malacollective.com. And you can get 20% off. That's very sweet. She's given 20% off to anybody listening using Radhi 20. So um, definitely go and check them out. And thank you again so much. Of course. Well, can't wait Bye. to meet you in person one day. Thanks very Me much. Me too. Definitely. We have to. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye.